These protein chocolate chip crescent rolls are just what the doctor ordered for a low-calorie sweet dessert. I'm currently going through a little dieting phase in an attempt to lose some fat, so my calorie intake has been slashed. I am a fiend for sugar. While some people have a sweet tooth, I have 28 sweet teeth. I can't control myself when it comes to baked goods. I will eat fresh chocolate chip cookies until I'm sick. So having some recipes like this one to help curb my cravings while I'm cutting is an absolute must. Let me show you how to make them. In a bowl, mix together 20 grams of oat flour, 17 and a half grams of cornstarch, 12 grams of vanilla casein protein powder, and one gram of baking powder. Mix that together until no clumps remain. The hydration of this dough is key, and because of that, I don't recommend using imperial measures. Metric weights are not only easier to use, they are more accurate. Once combined, pour in 40 grams of milk. Any kind of milk will work, but the nutrition estimates at the end use 2%. Then add 15 grams of liquid egg whites and stir to form your dough. Make sure you get all of the dry ingredients incorporated into the dough as it will help to make it easier to work with. This dough is going to be sticky, and it's not going to look like regular pastry dough because there's no gluten in it. Once you get it mixed, place the dough into the fridge for 10 to 15 minutes until it is no longer sticky to the touch. This will help make the dough workable and able to be rolled. Prepare two pieces of parchment paper to act as a barrier between your working surface and your rolling pin. You can spray them lightly with a bit of oil to prevent any stickage. Work the dough in your hands a bit to help coax it into a rectangular shape and place it down onto one of your sheets of the parchment paper. Place the other piece over the top and roll out the dough into a rectangular shape with about a quarter inch in thickness. Peel off the top layer of the parchment paper to reveal your masterpiece. Hopefully your dough looks at least somewhat rectangular in shape. You can always take a knife and cut off the edges to get smooth and crisp lines, but this part isn't completely necessary. You can have imperfect crescent rolls if you wish. We aren't selling these at a bakery and they will still taste the same whether or not they are perfect. Now we need to cut the dough into shape for the crescent rolls. When my mom used to make the ones from the tube when I was a kid, I remember them coming out of the package in the shape of a right triangle, so that's what I cut them into here. If you have any leftover at the end that isn't big enough for another cut, just peel it away and add it to your scrap pile from if you decided to crisp up the edges. You're going to want to roll this out into a rectangle again so it doesn't go to waste. We are counting it in the end for the total nutrition estimate, so it's in your best interest to use it aside from just being wasteful. Cut that new rectangle into the right triangle shapes again. At this point, I was debating whether or not I wanted to make the sharp edges again and keep repeating this process to infinity, and as you can see, I didn't do that. Next, melt 3 grams of butter in the microwave and spread it out evenly on top of your dough. Then take 12 grams of chocolate chips and spread them out over the top. If you use mini chocolate chips, you can get more coverage in each roll, or if you use a normal sized or bigger one, you can place them all in the center and have something that resembles more of a chocolate filled crescent roll, which I actually kind of prefer. To form the crescent roll, start at the fat side and roll it towards the point. I made six little crescent rolls. It doesn't really matter how many you make. If you somehow figured out how to cut your rectangle into two perfect right triangles and now have two giant sized crescent rolls, that's beautiful. It may affect how long it takes to cook them, but you can cross that bridge when you come to it. Now I cook these in my air fryer, but the oven does the exact same job. I put them on a small cast iron skillet first because I didn't want the grates of my air fryer basket to deform the bottoms and make them ugly. You can just place them directly into your air fryer basket with no worries, they're going to turn out just fine. If you're going to cook them in the oven, place them onto a cast iron pan or a baking sheet. Set your air fryer or oven to the bake setting at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to cook these for 5 to 8 minutes. They will probably cook faster in the air fryer because it's a smaller space, so pay attention once you get around the 5 minute mark. If you cook them in the oven, you can probably go a little bit longer. Once the tops are golden brown, that means they're done. It can be a nice touch to brush the tops with a bit of butter. The dish that you use to melt the butter in probably has enough remaining stuff to the sides to use to do this. The nutritional estimates for the entire recipe are 296 calories and 15 grams of protein. I love having recipes like this where it's only a small batch, but it's still enough to help me cure my sweet tooth that I will inevitably have each night. It helps me to control my caloric intake, which is especially important now that I am trying to maintain a calorie deficit. I've included the written recipe for how you can make these protein crescent rolls in the description of this video. If you end up enjoying this one, you should check out my recipe video for protein cinnamon rolls, which uses the exact same dough as we did here. The video is on my channel. Search for it and find it. That's it for this week. See you next time.